All right, guys, GoToBoy32 here. Check it out. Today is August 24th. Uh, today is the day that New York rolls out its new, highly celebrated red flag law. Uh, I, I, I woke up this morning, saw this, and I, I really I wanted to get it out there. And But what I wanted to do also is I wanted to do a little research. I wanted to hear it from uh, several news sources just so I can convey to you, and I have made a bunch of notes here, we're going to read these off to you because I can't, I'm not a lawyer, I, I don't pretend to be, but I wanted to make sure that what you hear here is straight from the horse's mouth. Now, I pulled this information off and one of the best sources that I have found that is not sitting there trying to skew, oh, it's the greatest thing in this entire world, we're all going to be safe now, yay, take the guns, take the guns. Yeah, we got that one earlier, I'm not going to go there again. But uh, this was WBFO 88.7, Buffalo's NPR news station. And it was really cool. I'm going to put the link down below because what they did was they actually have recordings from that district attorney there in Erie County. And uh, it's straight to the point. Exactly what he can and cannot do. Uh, he, he says that there's a lot of things that are in place to safeguard someone's rights. Uh, yeah, he didn't state them. <laughs> That's the scary part. What exactly is set in place to uh, preserve our constitutional rights from being violated from a red flag? Now, in the state of New York, let's go ahead and do this. This is how it works. Petitioner, that would be uh, a family member, someone from law enforcement, or a school administrator. Now, here's the neat thing, and I'm going to read this to you here in a few seconds, is that an administrator... Uh, unlike what happened to my friend Leonard where the police showed up at 11.30 at night to seize the uh, firearms because the kid made a statement, this red flag law, they cannot seize someone's firearms because a kid made a statement at school. Which I, I okay, it may not, everybody's against this whole thing, but at least they, they eliminated that section. That doesn't mean that they're not going to go and knock on somebody's door saying, they are advised that, yeah, your kid made a statement at the school. We would ask that you go ahead and make sure that all your firearms are accounted for. They're locked up and put away where he doesn't have access to them without your guidance. Uh, that That's common sense, guys. That's common sense. But uh, in any case, I'm glad that they implemented something that is uh, on the good common sense as far as we are concerned. Uh, just because your kid goes to school is running his mouth off, next thing you know at 4 a.m. you've got the, the cops knocking your door in to seize your gun. You're like, what in the hell is going on here? Okay, so the petition petitioner can be a family member, law enforcement, school administrator. Basically what they do is they go to the district attorney and petition the court to take guns and prevent from buying guns in the future for at least up to one year. Now, some of this stuff, this is not exact. There might be some skewing. That's why I want you to... For more information, this was the best site that I have found because they actually have the voice recording from the district attorney on this situation. A judge, uh, based on the recommendations from the district attorney, can issue a temporary order. The judge has to act on a petition on the first day. There's no waiting. So once like your ex-wife gets pissed off at you and she's ready to go ahead and punish you for something that you said or your new girlfriend or whatever, uh, she's going to go and, and complain to the district attorney saying you're a danger to yourself and others. And then uh, they're going to petition to the court. Uh, so basically that's it. There's no waiting. So if a judge grants the risk protection order, a notice must be given to the respondent. That's, that's the ex-husband whose wife got pissed off at him. But they don't have to be notified until after they can be brought into court. So you can be summoned to court for one thing or another and go, oh, by the way, guess what? Uh, you have a, an extreme risk protection order against you and we need to go collect your firearms. And by the way, during this period of time, you're not allowed to purchase any future firearms, which in a state of, uh, what is it, uh, New York, now they got a 30 day waiting period before you can buy that. Ask my good friend, 1776 or bust. Uh, not that he's had an extreme risk protection order, but he's uh, an avid gun. And, and I also uh, bald and curious to all those guys. They can tell you exactly what's going on. Um, but they don't have to do notify until after. They can be brought into court without knowledge that their guns are being taken. 
And I think that's the case. If it's, if it's not, please let me know. Once respondent has been put on notice, they have a right to come back to court after a minimum of three days and, and a maximum of six days for a hearing. The initial court appearance is for probable cause. Okay, does this person have a probable cause to believe the person is a harm to self or others? And then what they do is they do this thing is there's a 50% chance, if it's above 50% chance that they feel this, then they will issue the extreme risk protection order. Uh, if it's below, well, you're cool to go. Uh, the court will issue a temporary order. Okay, so later on, what they do is they have a hearing. This That was the temporary, okay? If you have your hearing and you're able to plead your case and you come away clean, and guess what? You're good to go. Uh, but at the hearing, it has to go to what they call clear and convincing evidence a harm to himself or others. The judge can issue the order for up to a year. Um, so anyway, this uh, this attorney, um, this district attorney said there are claims that there are safeguards in place to protect the rights of the individual uh, as far as your Second Amendment is concerned. Now, there are several people, and they do mention those guys here in this article, but I just wanted to read it. Uh, today's the day, man. New York, you're up and running on your extreme risk protection red flag law. Uh, I, I, I hope you uh, are happy. And I, I am interesting to see how many people are taken advantage of from ex-spouses, people who are pissed off at others. Uh, there's a lot of cases and I guarantee that are going to come out like this. And this is why we, as the Second Amendment advocates, are uh, anti-red flag, period. In any case, that's it. I'm going to put the link down below to these guys right here. Uh, please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Uh, this was a, a, a very good, clear and concise uh, article. It was written by someone. It appears that they were not pro or anti. It was a clear, basic facts. And that's one of the things that I appreciate. I'm so sick and tired of, oh, we must do something against the, the prayers and whatever and all this stuff. Let's just get all the guns. Because if we do that, then there will never be anything. And, 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 and Okay, anyway, I can go on forever. But uh, cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Happy, fr happy Saturday, August 24th. Congratulations, New York, in your continuation of violating our constitutional rights. Code Boy 32, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom is not free. Y'all be good. Take care.